Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. A look towards Point Pleasant from the Osborne Avenue access in Bayhead on Wednesday, the middle of our nor'easter here at the Jersey Shore. It's a storm that could have been a heck of a lot worse here in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region, but the brunt of it really hammered down on eastern Long Island into New England. Hopefully those heavy seas push a few more striped bass onto the beach and at our feet here at the Jersey Shore. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. The November edition is out. It's on newsstands. You subscribers should be getting a copy just another couple of days. Find Brian Stone on the cover with a good bass taken during the November Sand Eel Run 2020 at Island Beach State Park. Who knows, perhaps some of this gnarly weather that we have this week will put some of those tasty little baits uh, into the wash. But certainly there was, a, a, there was a more than enough bunker uh, and some rain baits uh, that everybody saw that if you were out on the beaches last week, there's just plenty of bait out there. And again, a lot of adult bunker, which is what the bass have been blowing up on of late. Um, if we do get that sand eel run, it's something that's just extraordinary. It's so great whether you're fishing by boat or by surf, but definitely pick up that November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Nick Konachewski has a great article in there, and he's focused purely on the surf, uh, but he'll run you through on page 26 some of the lures and presentations that you really need to have for that 2021 sand eel run. Stuff like this. rundown on where we stood before the storm and hopefully give you an idea of where we come after. First in North Jersey, Raritan Bay and out front, Monmouth County. A uh, good striped bass action found last week. As a matter of fact, Chuck Manny let me know uh, earlier this week, uh, his team won the Highmar tournament over the weekend with young Maddox Asher here coming in from Tennessee to snag the junior division while fishing aboard the tie man. Uh, for storm's sake, Chuck let me know that he thinks that things should clean up rather nicely by Friday of this week. Uh, so hopefully he's right about that, make it a little bit fishable. Uh, and we'll find out what those striped bass are doing uh, or have done since the storm. We're hoping to get out next week, Chuck and I, uh, to put another mini PSAT device into one of those jumbo striped bass. That's all part of the Northeast striped bass study. And again, you'll find more information on that as well in that November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. But as you can expect, as it happens every year, it's the natural migration, the natural cycle of things, that the northern part of New Jersey is getting the best striped bass bite first. And hopefully these fish continue on down the beach and would be nice to find some blitzing bass conditions in Atlantic and Cape May County this year. Simon Alcalay let me know that the Raritan lit up with jumbos this past Monday. Uh, it was the afternoon before the storm. He said Dave Neville had a personal best, 49-incher. Uh, followed that up, 45-incher, just about five minutes later. Now, Nick Konachewski, I mentioned him in his Beach Talk report this week. Uh, Phil at the Tackle Box, he said the Bayshore bass bite was solid, la solid last week before the storm as well. Um, Cliffwood Union Beach bass up to 30 pounds on poppers. Uh, also some plugs and reports of false albacore. Uh, along the Sandy Hook stretch as well. In fact, Young Ryder let me know this week, he plugged up a nice schoolie at the hook over the weekend, third grader from Fords, New Jersey. That was his first striper in the surf. It went for an SP minnow. Moving farther to the south, Dennis from Fisherman's Source sent this pick of Chris and his big fish last week out front with Captain Jake aboard Simple Life Sport Fishing on the troll. Again, that's one of the ways that folks are finding these striped bass if you're not seeing them up on top. Uh, again, a lot of folks are anxious to see what these big fish do in the days after the big blow. One of the things we talked about last week is a lot of folks felt that the bass turned off a little bit after the moon, and we hoped that two, three days after the full moon, things would take off again. I talked to Dennis Huber this week. He said he was doing, he's been doing a lot of diving of late, uh, and he has found one particular unusual character, sand tiger sharks at a lot of these reefs. Uh, off, the, off the Jersey coast, the wrecks actually, 
Um, but he says he's seen more sand tigers than he's ever seen before. I'm just wondering, he and I talked about maybe that was affecting the, the striper bite. Maybe that turns them off. Uh, if you look up the Dina D, it's a dive boat out of Barnegat Inlet. Um, you'll see some interesting footage of some of these sand tigers on some of these wreck sites. So if you're marking some fish underneath and they're not taking your baits, who knows? Uh, if you know your marks, if you know those boomerangs and you can tell what's a striped bass and what's not, otherwise it could be the uh, could be some sharks. Could also be, I uh, hope we don't have to deal with the spiny dogs this year, but it's possible. Down into Ocean County, the best striper bite has been in the back still. Uh, the best reports we're getting, dusk through dawn, uh, some spots along the Manasquan River, uh, the upper stretches of Barnegat Bay, a lot of the sod banks all the way down through Little Egg Harbor, behind Long Beach Island, into Great Bay as well. Quite a few fish on poppers before the storm, also on live spots uh, down into Absecon uh, and the Brigantine area. In fact, last week I joked that someone was going to have to knock Chris Chulo from his perch on the Riptide Striper Derby. Lo and behold, it was Chris. Actually, I don't think this was a derby fish. It was caught, I think, by boat. Chris hit this nice striped bass, 37 an inch or 18 and a half pounds behind Brigantine on live spot. So as you get into Atlantic and hopefully Cape May County, there are some bigger fish uh, in those back bays. And again, live spots, one of the ways to go for them. Out near Atlantic City, Jose Lopez was plugging the sod banks. Pre-dawn, using a mag darter in shiner color. He had eight bass to 26 inches and another two that were in the slot, 29 to 30 inches, those keeper size fish. And don't forget the classic bucktails as well, especially in some of these soupy conditions. I don't think you'd want to fish in the eight to tens on Tuesday, but if you get that heavy uh, ocean action and you maybe you're fishing from the jetties, the bucktails will get it done. Daniel Gray said Townsend Inlet on the Avalon side has been heating up. He got, a, he got this 30 incher uh, last week, quick CPR, catch photo and release. Uh, it was the other morning, 5.45, he was using a half ounce um, Gibbs, or uh, an SNS John Skinner bucktail with a split otter tail. Plenty of tog on those rocks as well. Um, good time of year to get out on some of those inlet jetties uh, with some green crabs or maybe some white leggers and of course some of those tog jigs put it down. The sedges, bridge abutments as well. And there were some sheep's head around too in Cape May County, uh, down into Delaware as well right before the blow. Kurt Magda, he let me know that he had a good one the week before. Uh, he was in the back bays of Wildwood using a green crab and a bottom sweeper jig. 27 incher he caught and released. Some good sheep's head action. Just keep in mind wherever you are in the region, if your boat's still on the water, I hope it is, good for you. Um, but we are getting into that time of year where dredging activity starts to take place late fall into the winter. Uh, I know Absecon has been a mess since they took out those channel markers, but I've been assured by the RFA that they'll be back in if they're not already in. In the Little Egg Harbor area, visit the township website because some of the creeks, including mine, will have dredge equipment in place by the second or third weekend, or the second or third week of November. Uh, so regrettably, some of us will be hauling out early. You might want to check in on that Little Egg Harbor Township website. Even down into Delaware, same thing, DNREC is announcing periodic, periodic closures of the Augustine Beach boat ramp near Port Penn and the adjacent intertidal beach south side of the existing rock groin. Uh, that's going to be going on through November 11th now. It's due to the weather conditions which have delayed some of the completion of the maintenance dredge project for that boat ramp around the channel. Headboats should be back in the sea bass grounds by the weekend. Friday still looks to be a little sporty, uh, but I would expect Saturday and Sunday to be back in play if you're heading to those wrecks, uh, getting in on that, that fishing just so long as the rain lets up. After this first nor'easter has come through, we're still expecting that bomb cyclone. Uh, it's not going to be like it was out on the West Coast, but that should be arriving by the end of the week as well. With that, a soggy Pocono outdoor report with my man, George. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, lots of wind and rain and just blustery conditions all over the area this week. And it looks like we're in for kind of a soggy weekend, too. But if you still want to get out and wet that line, there are some fish you can get into. And let's go over some of your options right now. Now, the rivers with all the rain, they're probably a little bit high and a little bit fast. So you might want to let them go at least for a couple more days, let things calm down. But there's plenty of fishing here at the lakes. You can always jump into the ponds. There's some great pan fishing right now, you know, always good. Uh, 
uh, Josh Taylor checked in. He was getting into some beautiful bluegills, uh, working that little tiny tungsten jig and a little bit uh, tip with a live minnow. Always great for getting on those panfish and crappie. Now, also uh, talk with uh, Dave Kyle. Now, he fishes out there near Harrisburg in the Susquehanna and even those little ponds in, and, and uh, lakes in that area. And he was doing the same thing, getting into those big old crappie. And he said he was using those small, little, little tiny jigs as well, working some timber. So some good action there. Get out, you can try that if you want to stay away from the river. Now also, um, I wanted to tie in with a, a good friend, Rich Bates. Um, Walla Palm Pack has had a little bit of trouble. You know, the water levels were down. They were doing some dam work. I hear now those water levels are up. So if you want to get out there and launch that boat now, it might be a good time to try. Uh, just double check, be safe getting launched with that low water. But I do hear they're on the rise, so that might be a little bit better for you. Uh, Rich Bates was out on Walla Palm Pack now getting in some really nice smallmouth. Uh, he says they're right up close to shore, rocky bottom with a, a little spinner bait. So some good action there. You don't even need a boat. You can just go walk the shoreline and get yourself into some smallmouth. He was also getting in some nice brown trout too. So you might have just right from the shore, go in and get yourself a bunch of fish. Lots of work uh, fishing out there, guys. Uh, just bear with the conditions. It is what it is. Get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Just as a reminder, you've got that New Jersey black sea bass limit change as of November 1st. We go from 10 fish in the bag to 15 fish. Just keep in mind that the size limit will also increase to 13 inches. The tog bag in New Jersey doesn't change until November 16th when it goes up to five fish here in the Garden State. Regulations, regulations, they come from regulators and regulators, they, they work for the government. You also have political appointments. The governor of New Jersey or Delaware or New York, he puts people in place to manage our councils and commission, the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council, Mid-Atlantic Council, ASMFC, uh, and here in New Jersey, for example, the governor also appoints somebody at the DEP, and that DEP chief is gonna be in charge of the Division of Fish and Wildlife. Bowling, golf, cornhole, not regulated. Recreational fishing, is regulated. You know I got some heat last week from doing that interview with Jack Cettarelli. He's the challenger in Tuesday's gubernatorial election here in the Garden State. Now I thought it was nice that a candidate got in touch with us and said I want to talk about fishing but apparently not everyone agreed. What do you think? Do you like to know if your political candidates like to fish and if they care about fishing? Or has partisan bickering gotten to the point and to the place where we don't even want to have the conversation independent of partisan politics. We don't want to know what politicians are going to do for our interest. Again, recreational fishing is regulated. I thought it was important. What do you think? Post on our YouTube page. There's a comment section down there. Would love to see what you think about these issues and concerns in the recreational community. Just do me a favor and keep it clean. Like Sammy H, who last week posted on our YouTube page that it was time for a striped bass moratorium based on the dismal Maryland reporting numbers. Well, just to keep you up to date, Maryland, the state of Maryland, their DNR, they do a sane sampling of young of the year striped bass on the upper stretches of the Chesapeake. And it's true that Maryland's upper Chesapeake young of the year recruitment numbers for 2021 are not very good. And yes, it's a cause for concern. However, the 2021 recruitment of new stripers in the lower Chesapeake, according to the folks out of Virginia, is it's right around average. So that's a little bit better, a little bad, a little good. In the Delaware River, it appears that the 2021 numbers will be down a little bit. Based on the latest report from New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife, 2021 ranks 31st in 41 years of young of the year surveys. So not exactly wonderful. What it'll be most interesting to see is what the numbers look like out of the Hudson River. The New York DEC does the same thing. They do SANE surveys. They continue on through November to figure out how many young fish, how many newly born striped bass are in that estuary. And according to the researchers, 2020 was a good year for baby stripers in the Hudson River but the 2021 numbers won't be out until next month. As soon as that report is out, I will keep you posted, fingers crossed, for a good hatch. Which leaves us sitting, waiting, and wondering about our own fall run down along the Jersey coast, throughout Delaware Bay, and of course down the Delmarva coast as well. Pete Perez leaves us with the image 
of the week. It's from the West Reach of Raritan Bay on Sunday. Very Hitchcockian, don't you think? It's what I hope to see when I return to the Central Jersey beaches in this weekend ahead. Democrat, Republican, Socialist, Libertarian, Greeny, doesn't matter, but don't forget to vote. Don't forget November 2nd, it's the greatest celebration of American of freedom this country has, Election Day. Go out and vote, vote often, make it matter. Hey, I'm Jim Hutchinson, we'll see you again next week with our fishing report for the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region, right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.